And now look at verse 2 of Genesis 6, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. You see that? Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Now this whole theory that these sons of God are the children of Seth, and the daughters of men were the children of Cain, is nonsense, is absolutely nonsense. If the sons of Seth had married the daughters of Cain, which many Christians believe they did, and they did, of course, and the reason why they talk about it is because they say the sons of Seth are called the sons of God, like how we are called the sons of God in the church age, because they were the godly line, right? This is their interpretation. They say these are the godly seed and this is the ungodly because they are the descendants of Cain so the interpretation given is that the godly line intermarried with the ungodly line therefore God destroyed the earth with a flood again you see I wonder what they have for brains how could they come up with such an interpretation I'm talking about big Bible teachers popular famous right uh, influential pastors and Bible teachers and scholars, they come up with such an interpretation. Something's wrong up there, you see, or something's wrong in here probably. For someone to come up, they are trying to avoid ridicule, you see, that's the main problem. They don't want to be seen as men who are given to such fanciful interpretations, as they are called. Right? They don't want to be laughed at, they don't want to be uh, you know, the laughing stock among the scholarly community. So they say, well, if you teach something else other than this, we might get laughed out of the room. So let's change it. Let's keep it very simple. The godly line married the ungodly line. Therefore, God destroyed the earth with a flood. Why would God destroy the earth with a flood? Is he so heartless? Just because some so-called godly people married ungodly people. It's ridiculous to say that some godly people married ungodly people. By the way, this whole teaching on a godly line and ungodly line is a myth. There is no such thing as a godly line in the Bible. You show me where the godly line is. You say, what about the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Who said it's a godly line? Look at the names that are mentioned in that genealogy of Jesus Christ. There are murderers, there are adulterers, there are prostitutes in that line, in that genealogy, and all sorts of other kinds of ungodly people. What makes you think that's a godly line? You see, their whole minds are messed with, because firstly, they don't believe the book. That's the problem. They don't believe God has preserved his words in one book, and in the English language, that's the King James Bible. They don't believe that. They think their brains are superior than this book. That's why God messes with their brains. It's very sad, but it's true. All right, I'm not just making some sarcastic uh, comments here. I'm not just saying something out of anger. This is a fact. When you mess with the words of God's word, right, God's book, God messes with your brain, with your mind. And you will come up with such kind of silly interpretation, saying the godly people married ungodly people. The problem is they don't believe the book. So they try to give their own spin to some of these things which make them uncomfortable. You see, they're not comfortable talking about these things as they are. Again, as I've said, they're afraid of ridicule. They love the praise of men Sorry. more than the praise of God. That's the problem with these people. They want to be praised. They want to be looked upon as intellectuals, right? If you teach what I'm going to teach now, most people will call you crazy. They'll say you're nuts. Right? They have all sorts of things for that. Right? They'll say you lost your marbles or this or that. But they'll look upon you as a fool, basically. No doubt Paul said that, you know, for Christ's sake, we should become fools. Talk uh, you know, about these things as they are. But when you do that, be ready for some criticism, for some sarcasm at the least. Right? They'll even call you all sorts of names and they'll reject your teaching, they'll reject you. But you stand for the truth. You know why? Because these things are important. Many Christians don't realize that. They think all oh, these things happened in those days. In what way are they relevant to us today? 
Well, Jesus said, these days are coming again. He called them the days of Noah. The days of Noah, or Noe, as it's mentioned in Matthew 24 in the King James Bible. If you believe the book, it says, so this is clear that the sons of God is not a reference to the children of Seth. And the daughters of men is not a reference to the children of Cain. Why would the children of Cain be called daughters of men? How stupid that sounds, right? They would be called the children of Cain. Or at least the children of men. Why would they specifically be called the daughters of men? Daughters doesn't mean sons and daughters. Even if sons could mean in the New Testament sense, both male and female, daughters can never mean both sons, uh, sons and daughters, right? So that's very clear.